Jackson, Mississippi has been plagued with water infrastructure problems for years now. In 2022 and 2023, the predominantly black city suffered from multiple incidents right in a row, leaving some residents without easy access to clean water for weeks at a time. And listen to this. The EPA says that in the last two years alone, the city has seen more than 300 water boil notices. Clearly, it's an issue we've got to talk about. So let's go ahead and bring in the Jackson, Mississippi Mayor, Shokwe Antar Lumumba. Thank you so much for joining us here. Here. Thank you I'm for sure having me. Agree. Absolutely. I appreciate you raising up this issue. And it's a big issue, right? Because the issues here range from a lack of water pressure in schools. You also have storms knocking out water for residents. But you say that a lot of these issues, these water issues, they've been going back decades and, and really are deep rooted. So what's going on here? What's driving all of these problems? And where is that infrastructure now? Absolutely. So, you know, I moved to Jackson uh, in 1988. Uh, I fondly, or not fondly, I distinctly remember in 1989 uh, where we had a winter freeze that debilitated our water system. For some residents, their memory and reflection goes back further than that. Uh, and so it's been decades long. Uh, this is due to uh, decades of neglect uh, through a, uh, a deliberate indifference or a, a willful neglect from state leadership to fund what many leaders in the city have been begging for for years. Uh, I give my predecessors credit uh, that they've been lifting this issue up, uh, but we've been, th these calls have been falling on deaf ears. And so uh, through the support of the Biden administration uh, for the first time, uh, we can say that there's light at the end of this tunnel. Uh, we were able to receive through a combination of the end of the year omnibus bill and other federal resources, more than $800 million to go towards our system. Uh, and so now we have to build not only a sustainable uh, and equitable and dependable system, uh, but a system that the community is at the root of making sure that it reflects what they deserve and what they need. And so now the city has received, what is it, more than $100,000 in water crisis donations. But you said in January that that money hadn't been touched yet. Yeah. So what's going on with that money? Yeah, so, so to be clear, uh, in terms of uh, the effort, the robust effort to support the residents of Jackson, that has actually been in the millions of dollars. Uh, a lot of that has been reflected in water donations uh, providing residents water. Uh, at the very beginning of this crisis, the challenge was getting water to residents. Mm -hmm. The $100,000 was money that was provided uh, in large part by uh, United Healthcare, a partner who works with the city, uh, in order to provide water filters. Those filters will help build confidence with residents uh, in the quality of water as we make these repairs. The first step is to make sure that they have water first, mm -hmm. right? And so the filters would not have been uh, the best solution early on because there was no actual water coming mm. out of the taps. Uh, and so these filters that we're looking at, because you don't know what you might meet when you get in people's homes, uh, the variation of plumbing uh, that take place. So we're looking at pitchers that we'll be able to provide these residents so that when the water is consistently flowing through the tap, they'll be able to fill the pitcher and they'll have an extra layer of comfort uh, in what they're being provided. And let's talk about the city of Jackson. It is 80% black and the EPA recently launched a civil rights investigation into whether state officials deprived Jackson of bipartisan infrastructure funds on the basis of race. So who or what is to blame for this? Well, you know, as I said before, there's been a uh, deliberate indifference or a willful neglect of the needs of our city. Uh, I believe that that is being taken to task now and, and an investigation is, is uh, ongoing. Uh, I think that not only based on Jackson being a blue city in a red sea mm -hmm. uh, and having the partisan divide, it is uh, the blackest city in the nation and so there are racial dynamics at play. Uh, and we have to ensure uh, that, that the, the past that we know Mississippi to be a part of isn't reflective of our present or our future. Uh, and so, you know, I, I do believe that this investigation is necessary. Uh, I think that it is part and parcel of, of a process that we've seen for many decades now, uh, generations, uh, where the state is, is not a willing partner. Uh, as we speak, there are uh, legislative measures going forward to attack the black leadership, uh, not just me as mayor, uh, but black judges, uh, attack black prosecutors, uh, and instead appoint leadership over a city, uh, similar to a system of apartheid. Um, and so, you know, we want to make certain that we're on the right side of history. Mm -hmm. uh, and this isn't, you know, the narrative of Mississippi and certainly not the narrative of Jackson, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. Jackson, thank Mississippi you. Mayor Shokwe Antar Lumumba. Again, thank you for being here. Thank you.
Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.